Okay, let's create one more custom brush here and show you a few fun things that can be done with it. Now we're going to be creating a stitching brush, um, and we're gonna we'll do a pretty simple one, um, but this could be used for embroidery or a few things like that. So let's come over here and grab. In this instance, we're going to grab our uh, rounded rectangle tool. So I'm gonna create this again in a new document here, and I'll get my rounded rectangle tool and uh, just sort of draw out a single stitch. You can imagine this is a single stitch of, of uh, yarn or whatnot. And I'll set my stroke to nothing. I'll set my fill color to black, much like we did in the previous video there. And uh, just for right now, I'm going to probably call that good. I may want to adjust my radius a little bit depending on how round I want the stitch. I'm going to increase mine just a little bit so it's got a bit more of a pill shape there on the end. And uh, that looks pretty good um, for, for me for now. Uh, maybe my brush is just a hair bit tall, so I'll decrease that a little bit. Okay, so that's a single stitch. Now the same thing here. I'll delete my background layer. I'm going to trim this layer down to this single brush. So let's come in here. I'm going to say uh, image trim trim that down all the transparent pixels so I'm left with just my stitch and I'll define a new brush preset from this so I'm gonna go ahead and say define uh, brush preset and I'm just gonna call this stitch hit OK and now I'll come back here to my regular document I'm gonna work with this brush a little bit so I'm gonna come over to my brush grab a brush and I'll switch to make sure I have a color here I'm actually going to uh, pull in just a maybe a dark red here or something like that for this particular brush and you can see right away I've got my brush I can click around and paint with this brush um, but what I want to do with this brush is play around with the uh, spacing and jitter so let's come into the uh, panel settings here for the brush and I'm gonna come into my shape dynamics and again I'm gonna crank up this spacing here and I'm also gonna rotate this brush all the way um, around 90 degrees. So I've got sort of this stitched pattern that looks kind of like that. Now depending on how close your stitches are going to be, you can play around with the spacing here. Mine are going to be fairly close, just with a little space in between them, so I'll maybe leave that at 400 for now. And uh, that looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and come down to the, the uh, shape dynamics here. So now this is kind of fun, but under the angle jitter, we don't want to randomize jitter, but instead we want to set the control of the angle instead of off. We want to set that to direction. Now what this does is it's going to set the angle of the brush to the direction that your mouse is moving. And you can see right away what this does. So I've sort of decreased the size here of my brush. And as I move my mouse around, this follows the angle of my brush. And you can see right away, you can create this nice stitched looking pattern to do all sorts of fun things. Now I've got here in my clipboard an image of some denim. So I'm just going to paste that in here really quick to illustrate this and uh, scale this down a little bit. You can find uh, uh, all sorts of textured patterns like this in the Creative Commons search or on a Google Images searcher or something similar. So I'm just going to scale this down a little bit and then I'll do a little bit of stitching on here and uh, we'll apply a simple drop shadow or something to illustrate this. So I've got this picture. I'll go ahead and then grab my my uh, brush and maybe we want to brush in a pocket or some stitching on here, maybe our names. Um, maybe this is going to be Andrew's, my new clothing line, so I can go ahead and come in here and of course this should probably be in cursive if we're doing dinner, but you get the idea there. We can stitch away um, anything we want. Maybe stitch in a pocket here. And then uh, once we have our stitching, to make it look a little bit more natural, my color here is obviously quite intense, but I can come up to my filters and maybe I can add an inner glow uh, to sort of give some depth to some of these uh, elements here. So let's mess around with this a little bit. Maybe add an inner shadow here, maybe a little bit of a drop shadow on that layer. Whoops, no wonder that's not working. I've got the wrong thing selected. So I accidentally, and we gotta undo, I painted my stitching directly on that layer, which I don't wanna do. I wanna add that on a new layer. Let's try that again. Go 
just hurry and sort of freehand that and then we'll uh, add a few shadows to this and just scoot that over a little bit so it's completely covered. So on that new layer, let's go ahead and add a drop shadow maybe to give it a little bit of shadow behind there and just play around here with these settings. Um, I'm gonna take that shadow basically back to zero and crank up the size and the spread a little bit so it's a little bit better weighted there. That looks good. I can come in here and add some inner glows or shadows to uh, play around with the depth there and how those stitches look to sort of simulate um, a bit better some of that. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, by playing around with a bit of these shadows here, we can sort of make it look like that thread has a bit more of a 3D texture to it with some lights and darks instead of being so flat. But uh, that's an example of using a custom brush and a few of those jitter settings inside of Photoshop for some, some fun stitching. In the next tutorial, it's going to be a long one. We're fi finally going to combine all of these techniques we've been using with the brush tool and look at how we can do some digital painting. And we're going to try to replicate and paint an apple.